This video begins with the esophagus. The esophagus is a hollow muscular tube about 25 centimeters long and 2 centimeters wide. This tube is closed unless the bolus is passing through it. Um, this esophagus will transport the food to the stomach from the pharynx. This esophagus is lined with stratified squamous epithelium because the food will will uh, abrade these this tissue and so it needs quick replacement. The esophagus um, ends at a sphincter, a circular muscle. It's called the lower esophag esophageal sphincter and it's usually closed. This sphincter prevents backflow of the stomach contents into the esophagus. If you've had heartburn, um, the, acid, the acidic contents of your stomach have backed up into the esophagus. This is something that you can't allow to happen on a regular basis. It will change the tissue in the esophagus, causing what's called Barrett's esophagus, which can lead to cancer. The esophagus leads to the stomach. The stomach is a muscular sac. It's expandable and can hold about a liter and a half of food. Um, it's a common, inside will be a combination of food, the saliva from the salivary glands, and then the juices from the gastric glands. Combined, this produces what's called chyme, which is a very acidic soupy mixture. This picture shows you the, um, the esophagus coming into the stomach and then the stomach leading out to the small intestine. This first part of the small intestine is called duodenum or duodenum. The stomach is named for, is, is, has different names for every part. This bottom part is called the pylorus. So the sphincter here that regulates the chyme leaving the stomach is called the pyloric sphincter. You can also see here that there's a lesser curvature of the stomach and a greater curvature of the stomach. And from the greater curvature is the greater omentum. Um, this omentum is mesentery that is filled with fats and it kind of acts like an apron over all of the abdominal organs. This is a photograph of the stomach of a cadaver. This shows the muscular um, nature of the stomach. It is a muscular bag. Inside are folds called rugi, and they will flatten out as this stomach fills up. There are several layers of muscle. The mucosa is simple columnar epithelium. It produces plenty of, at, of mucus because the gastric um, glands produce hydrochloric acid. And the mucus is necessary to protect the uh, tissue of the stomach. The layers are the same, although appear different um, from the small intestine. The layers are the same, though from the mucosa to the submucosa to the muscularis to the serosa. Inside the stomach are gastric glands, and these glands will secrete acid and enzymes. There are two main cells to learn. They are the parietal cells and the chief cells, making about a quart and a half of gastric juice daily. So if you look at the stomach, uh, diagram here, you can see these infoldings, and that would be a gastric pit. And then coming down the gastric pit will be the different cells that will produce the acid and the hormones. Pardon me, enzymes. Uh, the chief cells secrete pepsinogen. The word pepsinogen tells us it will produce pepsin. So pepsinogen is an inactive form of the enzyme pepsin. If the enzyme were produced 
in active form in the uh, gland, it would digest the gland. So it's produ produced um, it's kind of like a pre-enzyme. It's produced, comes out into the stomach, and then it's going to be activated by the hydrochloric acid from the parietal cells. Parietal cells produce that hydro hydrochloric acid as well as um, intrinsic factor, which um, helps us absorb vitamin B12 from our diet. Um, the intestines are different from the stomach in that they contain uh, the intestinal villi and microvilli. These increase the surface area to increase um, absorption of nutrients, increase exposure to the enzymes for digestion. So you can see that there are circular folds inside the intestine, and there are villi on the surface of that intestine, and on the villi will be what's um, sometimes called a brush border. It's kind of like really tiny microvilli to further increase the surface area. Same layers, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and serosa. Um, these nutrients that are absorbed by the intestine are going to go directly to the liver for processing and that is called the hepatic portal system. It's kind of a different uh, blood network that takes the nutrients directly to the liver. One thing that can't be absorbed into the um, bloodstream are the fatty acids. So inside each villus is a lacteal. A lacteal is a lymphatic capillary that's specialized to absorb the fats. So these fats are absorbed into, the fats from our diet are absorbed into the lymphatic system and then transported to the bloodstream. There's the brush border. So the villus, this is a single villus, and the villus um, has a lacteal in it. That's the green here um, to absorb the fats. There are lots of little microscopic um, microvilli on the surface of the villus to increase absorption, lots of mucus cells to keep the intestines lubricated with mucus, and you can see a very good blood supply. Most of the ab nutrient absorption occurs in the small intestine. The small intestine is about six meters long, and it is larger at the stomach end than it is at when it, where it enters the large intestine. There are three parts of it, and you must know each in order. The first is the duodenum or duodenum. And here is a very, very important part of the small intestine because this is where the secretions from the pancreas and liver come. The jejunum is the second portion and this is where most chemical digestion and a lot of nutrient absorption occurs here. And the third part is the ileum. This ends at the um, large intestine, at a region of the large intestine called the cecum. So there is a sphincter there called the ileocecal valve or sphincter that controls the flow from the small intestines into the large intestines. And here you can see the blue is the duodenum, the purple is the jejunum, and the orange is the ileum. The ileum ends here. This portion of the large intestine is called the cecum. It kind of dips down. There's the um, appendix. And where the small intestine comes into the cecum is the ileal cecal valve to regulate the flow of substances from the small intestine to the large intestine. There is hormone regulation of digestion. Um, there are five main hormones and most are secreted by the duodenum. 
and these hormones will adjust gastric activity. That means slow it down or speed it up and also adjust secretions of the accessory digestive organs. These are the five hormones. We, we will not be testing on the hormones whatsoever, but feel free to stop at this page to read about the different hormones. You do not need to know the hormones.